Hello everyone, welcome to my Sharpen AI version 3.2.1 review. And I just really have to say to Topaz Labs, are you kidding me? Um, so let's start. Uh, so I'm gonna click on this one, out of focus, because this is the one that happens to be most. It's not motion blur, it's the fact that I, when I say most, it happens to me occasionally, <laughs> out of all of them, that you just might fractionally miss focus in a shot. So something has moved, you're taking the shot and you just fractionally miss focus, especially when you're shooting with a shallow depth of field. So this is the example here now. So it is showing um, an owl quite clearly there. And uh, I'm just gonna reset that so we can have our slider to show the original on the left side and the preview on the right side. Now, once I reset that, you can see it's still updating Numblo here in the bottom corner. So it's saying preview is updating. What it's set for at the moment is out of focus, normal, everything is set in automatic. You can see the image is cropped in along here and we're at 85%. Now, um, I suppose generally most of these demo images are going to work perfectly because they're matched perfectly for the software. So I'd always be a small bit critical of them. So, um, <laughs> and as you can see, look at that. So this is the preview or this is what's done. And that's what it looked like beforehand. Now that is staggering. There is detail being pulled out there that just, it shouldn't be possible to do it. So I said, right, fair enough. This is a demo image. This is probably, this is probably exactly what's going to work on this software. So I said, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one of my own shots. So just popped over into Lightroom here now. This is the photograph I'm talking about. So um, if I just go to the image there now and it looks reasonably okay. It was one of the first shots I took. It wasn't a stunningly beautiful shot. It was just a test shot, just to test my exposure, my depth of field and everything else. And you can see there's a little waterfall in the background. So I shot this at F11, I think. Yeah, so I wanted to keep retain a small bit of detail in the background. Not too mightily much, but just a small amount. You can see the trees and everything else are blurred out nicely. There's a nice depth of field to a certain extent in the photograph. It shot at 155 mil at 1 125th of a second at ISO 64. So um, basically speaking, it looks kind of reasonably okay, but as soon as I look at it, I can see something wrong. So this part of the sheep isn't too mightily bad, but up here, there's no detail. So if I zoom in on that, you can quite clearly see that's blurred. It's out of focus. And what happened here is my focus just went fractionally behind the sheep so i just missed my focus a small little bit and i think i was also slightly moving too as well at the time so there was a small bit of camera shake it was only a test shot i was just checking depth of field checking my exposure just firing off a quick shot not a finished image by any manner of means so i wasn't too mightly worried about it but just when i was checking out sharp ai and the new version 3.2.1 i said look have i a photograph that would actually work this is the perfect example so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to edit this in, sharpen AI. So edit a copy of Lightroom adjustments. I just popped up the exposure small little bit just so you can see the image properly. It's preparing file for editing. I'm gonna go back over here to sharpen AI and there we have our image. Now, as it happens, it's just opening the preview here on the bottom corner you can see. So it's previewing. It's gonna, it's opening an out of focus, normal. There's very noisy and very blurry. Everything is completely automatic. You can see the image is cropped in along here and we're set at about 85%. So it's very, very similar to the owl photograph, which again was cropped in it, I think it was at 83% or something. So um, so again, the preview and the original, there's no difference because the software hasn't kicked in as of yet. But we're nearly there now. The preview is just updating here. And there we go. And wow, <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. Look at that. Wow, that's, that is really good, considering our cropped in at 85% there now. Look at the detail around the eye, the two eyes, the ears, even if it's a hair above on top. That's really good. Now, the one thing I don't like is this detail here and all that there now again. So, um... Yeah, we'll just mess around with settings a small bit there now. So uh, there's motion blur, which it isn't really motion blur. There's out of focus. It was out of focus. There's too soft. So out of focus is the correct one. Um, so if we just go down here to very noisy, 
and see is that going to get rid of the, the noise we're getting down along there and all the fine detail it was picking up. It was actually overdoing it completely. So again, it's just previewing. Give that a couple of seconds. I'll fast forward it here now. Yeah, and we're there. And that's it. And that has got rid of the problem. Maybe there isn't quite as much fine detail there. But that is really good. Look at the difference in that. And look, wow, look at that. Look at this little piece here. Look at the difference that's making just to that piece there now. That's crazy, isn't it? And around the ears and whatnot. Now, is it 100% perfect? No, it's not really. But if I... We'll whack that up to 100 there now again. And again, I'm going to fast forward for this, this for you here now again. So we'll see what this looks like. So we're nearly here now again. Um, the preview was updated. And wow, that's good now again. That is really good. Now, have we the same problem with detail going back? No, we don't. That looks really good. And just when you slide that across. That is absolutely insane. Look at that detail recovery. That's not sharpening. That's that's black magic of some form, I think. Topaz Labs. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing with your algor algorithm, but you're definitely doing some kind of vo voodoo or <laughs> plastering thing with it. That is... That's really good. That's, that's really, really good. That has made that photograph totally usable. Absolutely, definitely usable. That's crazy. Um, and as you say, there's no, there's none of that detail that we're getting the the over digitized look. Um, all I can do is just gonna go back and just bring down the suppressed noise or the curiosity, and that's gonna preview again. I'm guessing this is going to be worse. And we're nearly there now again, just finalizing the updating. So very noisy so far. And wait, there now a second. That looks good to me. That looks good to me. Wow. Yeah. I think leaving, bringing the noise down a small bit is definitely the suppressed noise control is definitely after helping a small bit to remove blur. Um, no, next we're going to try is just very blurry, just for the sake of it. Again, I'll fast forward this now again. The one thing you'll notice with all these is every photograph is slightly different. So you can, might find that, let's say, motion blur might work better in some shots. But motion blur is generally down to camera shake, out of focus. There isn't motion blur as such on this shot. It's just that I missed focus. And sorry, that's after pulling in there now. That is, yeah, that's too much. If you look, look at the background, see all the artifacts you're getting here now. Now again, you could pop it into Photoshop and remove all that, layer it and put the original one there. But I suppose I'm, I'm looking for an all round, but God, that's really good. The detail level is, wow. That is really good, all right? I'm just gonna try bring up the suppressed noise again up to about 25, where it was earlier. So, um, but again, sorry, as I was saying, is it is a matter of messing around with each individual photograph. And you might say, oh my God, it's an awful waste of time if you've 20 or 30 photographs to do like this. If you've 20 or 30 photographs to do like this from a photo shoot, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> if you have one, fair enough, it happens. But 20 or 30 is just ridiculous. But, um, Again, this is nearly here now, so let's just see what happens with this now. So, suppress noise, is that going to take away some of the background detail? No, it's not. It's still there. Yeah, and the noise and everything else, yeah. It's just a bit too much. It really does work, so if I go back to very noisy there now again, and bring suppress noise down, and um, we just load that up once more, yeah, there we go. You can see it's not quite the same thing when I go back to very blurry. You can just see the detail around the eye is absolutely crazy there now on very blurry. That is, that is, and look at the detail in the hair. Um, that is really, really good. So again, very blurry, or if I go very noisy, very noisy is a lot softer. And if I just try normal, 
So this is going to update the preview here now again. So I'll just fast forward this feed. So we're nearly there. Um, just about to update the preview. And whoa, yeah, we're back to our original problem. All the digital artifacts and whatnot here, it's just a bit too much. And actually, interestingly enough, if you look at the eye and the detail around the eye on the face, very blurry actually pulls it out a lot better and we don't have as much noise. The only problem being is we have these digital artifacts in the background. So it's trying to make sense out of the out of focus areas in the background too as well. But just looking at normal, normal is good enough. Very noisy is practically the same. Very noisy works, from what I can see on the overall image, very noisy works perfectly. With the remove blur up at 100 here now, suppress noise down, add grain down. So, and just going to very blurry then. That really does pop some very nice detail there. Around the ears, around the eyes, around the nose and the mouth, and the ears there again. And it's actually not too mightily bad on the body, but it's just this background is the problem. So again, it might be a case of bringing this into Photoshop and just using layers and superimposing that sheep on the original image. Um, that might be the best way out of that shot. For me personally, um, I would think very noisy, there now at that, that's gonna look really good. And again, we're zoomed in at 85%, so by the time you zoom out, that's going to look, that's gonna look good. That really is gonna look good. So um, if I just get rid of, I still have the out of focus sample there, so I'm just gonna get rid of that, close without saving, and we're gonna pull this one back along there now again. So here's our image. Again, it's updating the preview because I went out of it and went back in along again. But if I just bring it back to out of focus, very noisy and move blur up and suppress noise down. So that's gonna give us our overall image. We were happy with it a minute ago. So what I'm gonna do is just click on save image. So when I click on save image, it's gonna ask me what image format do I want to save it in. So you've obviously a whole lot of image formats. You've your JPEGs, your TIFFs, PNGs, DNG. So um, your compression system, um, you have your bit depth, you can 16 or 8 bit, and you can change the file name. You have your color profiles, you have a load of different color profiles there now. And you can put it in as, it's going to put it back in the same source directory as it actually, or save it in the same source directory as the image was in, the original image was in. Or you can go custom, so you can actually pop it into whatever picture or whatever directory you want. Is that. So if I just click on save there now, it does take time. It really does. This isn't a, a 10 or a 20 or a 30 second fix. Every photograph like this that you're going to have to resharpen or um, use Sharpen AI on is probably going to take you 10 minutes. So it's not something you're going to want to do every time. But if you have a really nice photograph, let's say there's a child smiling, looking at his mother or something, just for example, and you just miss focus just between the two of them, that you can just bring it into Sharpen AI and it'll pull back along then again. So um, th that's going to be worth an absolute fortune. I was expecting this not to work as well as it did. And that's, that, that's what's kind of taken me back a small bit. And yes, obviously enough, the, the sample images they have are going to work really well because I suppose in my mind, you'd always think they'd be kind of tricked into working well in the system. But as you can see from this one, it really does work. That's one of my own photographs that I took that I missed focus on. Again, as I say, it was only a test image, but it is really quite scary how well this is after working. So I'm just gonna fast forward to this and I'll tell you exactly how long it took then to actually save the image. The end results have you seen though are incredibly impressive. So. Yeah, the software really is worth it. To be honest, with you, it 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 really, 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 and truly is. I suppose this, um, when you think of gigapixel AI and how well that works, you see Sharpen AI, how well that works. I'm going to put up a review of Denoise AI too as well soon. There now, um, and really go into a small bit more detail on that. Um, the image editing bundle from Topaz Labs is incredibly good value. I'd highly recommend it. I suppose is what I'm saying. I'm in awe of you, Topaz Labs. Well done. Awesome bit of software. The way photography is going, it's it's really frightening. It really, really, truly is frightening. 
how the hell do you do that? <laughs> That's just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I'm, thanks for listening, everyone, and um, see you out there.